Hi, I'm Jen from the Crocheters of Awesome blog. Um, uh, welcome to Tour de Fleece, or in my case, because of my animal fiber allergies, uh, Tour de uh, Faux Cashmere and Silk. <laughs> um, last weekend, I was spinning uh, with a couple of my friends at our local yarn store, um, getting geared up for the tour, and I brought in um, some silk hinkies. And it's brought up a discussion with a couple of people who haven't uh, worked with silk hankies before. And so we're going to take a look at how, at how it works. So first I have some silk hankies. They're by uh, Wonderland Dye Works on Etsy. This is Colorway Dragonfly. And it's got uh, a berry purple, a dark foresty green, and a new leaf kind of olivey green. Uh, so it's going to be a great combination. But this is the way hankies usually come. And it seems like a really thin pile, but once you start taking the layers apart, there's probably 60 or 70 hankies in this little pile. Um, and the way that you separate them is you just carefully grab the edge and try to make sure you only have one at a time. They're going to be very cobwebby. And you can usually tell by the edges, so you can see there's another one here, another one here. Just try to peel one off at a time, and you just peel it off like that. It'll be a little stringy, that's the cobwebby part. So you can see one silk hanky, how transparent it is, the berry, the darker green, and the lighter green. So the next thing you do is you decide where you want your, uh, where you're going to join. Do you want to just be random or do you want to join in a certain color? So I usually pick a color. In this case, I'm going to pick the berry because it goes all the way across the top and then the two greens. And so I know that each of my hankies, I'm going to start on berry and end on berry. So that tells you where to poke your hole and you really just stick your fingers through and make a hole. So I have the berry on top and the greens are on the bottom. Then you just widen this, widen this, widen this, pull, 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 depending on what width you want. I'm just gonna pre-draft a little bit. Some of this is because I have uh, psoriatic arthritis, so I can't draft quite as much on the fly. And then you just kind of go around this big circle of fiber, getting into the darker green now. And if you have a hard time pulling it, your hands are too close together. Silk has a super, super, super long staple. So don't be shy about getting those hands spread farther apart. And then we're getting back into the berry. So now the next thing you decide if you care is do you want berry, you know, color one, color two, color three, or color one, color three, color two. It's obviously your choice. Then I just break it open with the berry and then this would be the fiber that I will join to the one that I already have here spinning on my a golden 1.4 ounce spindle. And they join just the same as any other fiber. You mix, you know, you mix a couple inches of fiber together and you keep going. Silk has a super long staple, like I said before. So you, it, once you get it to the roving part, you can spin it any way you want. It'll be totally fine. And here's the skein that I was uh, working on last weekend. It's uh, greens and golds. I don't know if you can see that color, but you can definitely see that raw silk texture where there's some bumps and that just adds to the character of the yarn. So I hope that helps. Happy spinning.